In the previous chapter, we introduced a basic balance sheet which listed assets first, then liabilities and stockholders' equity. Upon completion of this learning objective, you will be able to prepare a classified balance sheet which classifies assets and liabilities as current or long-term. In the previous chapter, you learned that a balance sheet presents a snapshot of a company's financial position at a point in time. It lists individual asset, liability, and stockholders' equity items. To improve users' understanding of a company's financial position, companies often use a classified balance sheet which groups similar assets and similar liabilities using a number of sections or subtotals. This is useful because items within a group have similar characteristics. A classified balance sheet generally contains the standard classifications listed in this table. So the classifications for the assets will be current assets, long-term investments, property plant and equipment, and intangible assets. For liabilities, it, we, we will distinguish between current and long-term liabilities, and the stockholders equity section will remain the same in the sense that we're going to list our common stock and then our retained earnings. Let's look at Franklin's balance sheet. In a classified balance sheet, assets are classified as either current or long-term. Our current assets are those accounts we expect to convert to cash or use up within the year. Our long-term assets are those assets that extend beyond a year. Our long-term assets would include long-term investments, property plant and equipment, and intangible assets. We'll talk about each of these classifications in detail in subsequent slides. Right now, I want you to think of an acronym or way to remember that we list current assets first, then our long-term investments, then property plant and equipment, and lastly, our intangible assets. In the liabilities and stockholders equity section of a classified balance sheet, the first grouping is current liabilities. Current liabilities are the debts and obligations that the company expects to pay within the year, whereas long-term liabilities are debts and obligations that extend beyond a year. The last section is stockholders' equity, and there really is no change in the fact that we list common stock and then retained earnings. Current assets are assets that a company expects to convert to cash or use up within one year or its operating cycle, whichever is longer. Franklin Corporation had current assets of $22,100. For most businesses, the cutoff for classification as a current asset is one year from the date of the balance sheet. For example, Accounts receivable are current assets because most companies expect to collect them within one year. Supplies is also a current asset because the company expects to use the supplies in operations within one year. Some companies use a period longer than one year to classify assets and liabilities as current because they have an operating cycle longer than one year. The operating cycle of a company is the average time required to go from cash to cash in producing revenue. Companies must purchase inventory, then sell it on account, and then collect cash from customers. For most businesses, this cycle takes less than one year, so they use a one-year cutoff. For some businesses, such as an airplane manufacturer, this period may be longer than a year. We will assume that companies use one year to determine whether an asset or a liability is current or long-term. Common types of current assets are cash, short-term investments, receivables such as accounts, notes, and interest receivable, inventories, and lastly prepaid expenses such as insurance and supplies. This slide presents the current assets of Southwest Airlines. Companies list current assets in the order in which they expect to convert them into cash. Follow this rule when doing your homework. So when you're filling in the current assets section of a balance sheet, you want to list cash first, 
then short-term investments, followed by accounts receivable, then inventories, and then that last item will be your prepaid expenses. Long-term investments are investments in stocks and bonds of other corporations that are held for more than one year. They also include long-term assets such as land or buildings that a company is currently not using in its operations. And lastly, it could be long-term notes receivable. Franklin Corporation reported total long-term investments of $7,200 on its balance sheet. And this is an example of the long-term investments for Yahoo. Property, plant, and equipment are assets with relatively long useful lives that are currently used in operations. It includes land, buildings, equipment, delivery vehicles, and furniture. How do we allocate the benefit of these assets over the multiple years that we expect them to benefit the corporation? The answer is depreciation. Depreciation is the allocation of the cost of an asset to a number of years. We assign a portion of an asset, asset's cost as an expense each year rather than expensing the full purchase price in the year of purchase. So let's assume that this truck costs $60,000. Again, we're not going to expense this full amount in the year of the purchase, but rather we're going to allocate that cost over its useful life. Let's assume it's six years and the equipment has no value at the end of year six. So what we'll do is we will have depreciation expense of $10,000 for the next six years. The accumulated depreciation account shows the total amount of depreciation that the company has expensed so far. Franklin Corporation reported accumulated depreciation of $5,000 and property, plant, and equipment of $29,000. Sometimes we refer to property, plant, and equipment as fixed assets or plant assets. And the last thing I want to mention before we go to the next slide is you are not going to depreciate land. I want you to think of land as having an unlimited life. This slide presents the property, plant, and equipment of Cooper Tire and Rubber Company. In this section, we list the long-term operational assets first. So in this instance, land and land improvements, then buildings, machinery and equipment, and finally, molds, cores, and rings. We then list accumulated depreciation, which is a contra asset account. So it will appear just after the accounts it offsets, in this case, PP&E. Book value is the difference between the cost of any depreciable asset and its accumulated depreciation. Many companies have assets that do not have a physical substance, but they are often very valuable. We call these assets intangible assets. Examples of these types of assets are goodwill, patents, copyrights, and trademarks or trade names. We'll talk about intangibles later in the semester, but a very, at a very high level, goodwill results when we purchase a business and the price of that business is greater or exceeds the fair value of the assets and liabilities we receive. A patent protects an invention. Again, if I have any um, Shark Tank fans, you know that one of the things they ask when somebody has a really good idea is, do you have a patent? Copyrights protect published work, like our textbook. Trademark or trade name, again, I want you to think of these as words, phrases, jingles, or a symbol that distinguishes a particular enterprise or product. I can show you this symbol and you will immediately think of McDonald's. You might even take it one step further and think of a Big Mac. Another thing I can show you this symbol and you'll probably immediately think Nike and maybe you'll think of just do it. Right? Again, these they don't have a physical substance, these items, but they are often very valuable. The last thing I want to mention is that sometimes intangible assets are reported under a broader heading called other assets. This is an example of Time Warner's partial balance sheet showing the intangible assets section. 
In the liabilities and stockholders equity section of the balance sheet, the first grouping is current liabilities. Current liabilities are the debts and obligations that the company is expected to pay within the year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Common examples are accounts payable, salary and wages payable, notes payable, interest payable, and income tax payable. Also included in current liabilities are the current maturities of long-term obligations. These are going to be payments to be made within the next year on our long-term debt. Franklin Corporation reported five different types of current liabilities for a total of $16,050. This slide shows the current liability section from the balance sheet of Alphabet Inc. The company has over $19.3 million in current liabilities. This represents the debts and obligations that the company will pay within the next year. Long-term liabilities are the debts and obligations that a company expects to pay after one year. Liabilities in this category include bonds payable, mortgage payable, long-term notes payable, lease liabilities, as well as pension liabilities. Most companies report long-term debt maturing after one year as a single amount on the balance sheet and then show the details of that debt in the notes that accompany the financial statements. Others list the various types of long-term liabilities. Nike reported a little over $7.38 million of long-term liabilities in its balance sheet in a recent year. We will discuss stockholders' equity in more detail later in the semester. For now, stockholders' equity will consist of two accounts, common stock and retained earnings. Companies record as common stock the investment of assets into the business by the stockholders. They record as retained earnings the income that has been retained for use in the business. These two parts combined make up the stockholders' equity section on the balance sheet. In this exercise, you will prepare a classified balance sheet. If we were in the classroom, I would begin by having you identify each account as current asset, long-term investment, property, plant, and equipment, intangible asset, current liability, long-term liability, or stockholders equity. And you would come up with this solution. We are given the beginning balance of retained earnings, but we need to calculate the ending balance. I hope you remember how to calculate ending retained earnings. Remember, it's the beginning balance plus net income minus dividends equals our ending retained earnings. All right, we have our expense and we have our revenue. All right, these are reported on our income statement. If we take our sales revenue or service revenue of 14,700 and subtract our expenses will arrive at net income of $6,020. There have been no dividends distributed, so our retained earnings is going to be our beginning balance of $40,000 plus net income of $6,020. Again, dividends are zero, so our ending balance in retained earnings on December 31st, 2017 is going to be $46,020. You're now ready to go ahead and prepare the classified balance sheet. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video.